All right, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna be starting another playlist. If you kind, if you like my kind of content, you can hit that subscribe button. You can like this video and you can go onto my Patreon page where more summaries and more notes will be coming out uh, very shortly. Happy 2023. With 2023 starting, I've decided I wanted to sort of kick up my efficiency. I wanted to uh, add a couple more playlists that I'll be going over over the year on uh, general relativity, on my work as a PhD student, on this, and on a couple others that are be, that will be coming out uh, uh, shortly. Uh, let's dive right into this uh, new playlist. So this playlist is uh, going to be based off of another book, right? So this is Physics from Symmetry by the same author that is covering the book that we're going over on no-nonsense quantum field theory. Now, Physics from Symmetry, this is a really, really, I think, a really good book for people who are really into wanting to get into uh, modern physics, right? The idea that we can take uh, complex math, right? So this is, this is really all about taking complex math to physics. So ideas that we take from abstract mathematics um, and understanding the abstract mathematics and how it relates to physics, this book is going to be, I think, very, very good for those of you who really want to get a good grasp of this kind of material. And I am providing videos on this book because for some of you who perhaps uh, don't get as much information from reading the book uh, and would like some sort of accompaniment um, through a video on this kind of stuff to find it helpful, I think um, it, this will provide some sort of substance for that. Now, let's get right into the material here. Uh, I, I want to waste no time here. So we're going to start talking about uh, complex numbers first because, and this is going to sort of lead us into the idea of generators really quick. So what, so a complex number, if you remember back from complex analysis, or if you haven't really taken complex analysis, all that's really need to be known so far is that I, the number I, can be thought of, or is thought of, as the square root of negative one. And when we exponentiate that, we get this very famous equation right here, right? So forget about this r for a second. e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Now this is something called Euler's formula, right? This is Euler's formula. This is something, this is something that is taught typically, I think, in like a calculus two class, maybe a calculus one if you're lucky. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've taken calculus, but anyways, this is sort of the foundational point here and we get to think of this i here, or this or this exponentiation of an i factor as being some sort of th thing, some sort of mathematical object that rotates complex numbers, right? So in an example here, I have z prime. This is a new complex number, uh, which is a rotated old complex number, right? So you have your original complex number z, when you multiply it by e to the i theta, you get a new z prime, right? So say, for example, I'm rotating 90 degrees, right? So I have some uh, number here, right? So my number, again, is right here. This is 3 plus 5i right here. And that's what I have written right here. And if I want to rotate this 90 degrees, right? I put 90 in here, right? So this is going to give me negative 1, right? And this is going to give me 1. And so I get 3i minus 5. And so the 90 degree rotation we see is right here. Right, so this is, the, the idea here again is that upon application of e to the i theta, you're rotating some vector or some number in some complex plane, right? So this is our imaginary axis, our real axis. I'll write that real imaginary. The idea again is that you can rotate numbers, 
Very weird thought but when you think about it, but you can rotate numbers if we're starting to think in complex terms or in terms of I, right? This is something that we really want to keep in the forefront of our mind. It's something that I'm going to allude to throughout this playlist, this idea that you can rotate a number, right? Let's, so, so if, let's continue, right? So if we have, so, so, so we have in our minds now the idea of I, or an exponentiation of this I will give us some sort of rotation, right? So let's think in our minds now, if we are, okay, what are things that rotate things? Matrices, right? So maybe there's a connection between exponentiating and multiplying by some matrix, right? So complex exponentiating and multiplying by a matrix, by some rotation matrix, those two things might be related. Right. This is we're starting to get a feel for what this might uh, what this might look like. So if they're related, let's postulate that perhaps oops we have, this relationship looks like this. Right. So we have one right is just associated with our identity matrix, and I is associated with this matrix. Well, does this work? Right. This works because I squared. If we do if we do this. Multi this multiplication, we get negative one, right? We get a negative of the identity. Same here, we just get the identity if we square i, if we square, square one, right? So th th this works, right? This works, and this is something that we're gonna want to keep in mind also because uh, this is gonna be this can be thought of as a generator, right? And what we're gonna get back to that idea really quick here, um, and so just for uh, just for fun here, we can say, well, okay, if we have this here, so it's cosine theta plus I sine theta, this is what we had up here, right? Our Euler's formula, cosine theta plus I sine theta equals this exponentiation. Well, right, so let's draw that. So our E to the I theta is equal to that, right? If we make this, if we substitute our matrices into here, right, we get this, which is very interesting, right? Because what we're saying now is that uh, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta minus i sine theta sine theta, oops, cosine theta. And this is interesting because we have exponentiation and a matrix, right? And this was made possible by the identification that I was equal to this matrix, or we this was some sort of mapping, right? Mapping from complex to matrices. So from this complex number to a matrix, this sort of mapping, we're able to recover this very nice and very true statement that exponentiation is a rotation. A complex exponentiation is akin to rotation. That's going that's a very, very important. Let's so for a generic complex number, z equals a, some real number, plus i, b. Again, we just apply these matrices. We do this mapping. i is associated with this matrix. One is associated with this matrix. We get this, right? So the idea here is that we make this mapping from complex to matrix, to matrices, to a matrix of some sort. And that is going to open the world to us to be able to understand that complex exponentiation is akin to uh, wrote, is akin to some finite rotation. Now I don't want to belabor the point too much, but this we looked at the idea back in a playlist on quantum field theory that 
when we exponentiate a matrix, we can get the same thing, right? And the idea is that if we exponentiate this guy, we also get We also get this. Okay. What is the what on earth is this, right? Where do where do, right? So we said that we can we have this mapping, right? Right. And we put it, we're putting it in an exponential now. We have this mapping, putting it in exponential. This thing, we're gonna call a generator. Now this is key, key. This mapping that we did, this is an arbitrary matrix. This matrix right here is, is arbitrary, right? There's nothing stopping us from trying to think up of another matrix. So the enterprise of this book, or the enterprise of this uh, playlist is going to be to try to understand what the ensemble of these matrices are like. We're going to call them generators. Such that when you exponentiate a generator, you get their associated transformations, right? So this is the transformation. And generators are going to be associated with fundamental particles. And so when we think about transformations of some system, right, when we think about the things that remain invariant under some sort of transformation, Immediately when we think transformation, we want to think generators. And when we think generators, we want to think these generators are associated with something physical, right? This is the, this is sort of the fundamental link between modern physics and, um, ad advanced complex mathematics, because he, here's the kicker. The, the kicker is I'll erase this. When we get to say a quaternion equals a plus i b plus j c plus k, put hats on these guys, a b c d. When we get to quaternions, each one of these is going to be associated with their own matrix. And depending on the transformation, right, the depending on the transformation, we can have matrices and depending on the nature of this transformation, we can have matrices in one dimension, right? So each one of these can be in one dimension, or th these are the representations. In one dimension, we can have representations in two dimensions, right? So these would be like, say, two by two matrices, we can have in three dimensions, these would be three by three matrices. We can have them in four dimensions, right? So four dimensions, these would be four by four matrices and so on. We can get down to eight dimension dimensional representations of transformations, 
right? So that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Uh, so nothing should really stop us from these, from having a dimensional representation of some transformation. That's that's the idea here. We can understand what the eigenvectors of these are. We can, and we can. That'll help us understand more exactly how uh, these fit into a bigger picture of something we'll call Lie algebra later on. So this is really just an introduction to this new playlist on physics from symmetry. Uh, again, the book is this. If you have the book, feel free to follow along. If you don't, that's completely fine. I, I intend to follow it, and I t intend to also use ideas from outside sources as well to help us understand this type of math um, even better. And so with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.